Adobe just announced the new version of Illustrator for 2022, which has several new features, but there's one in particular you might find interesting, and that's the brand new 3D functionality. Let's have a closer look. Before we dive in, I'm sure you're curious to see what kind of results we can get with these new tools. These are just a couple of experiments I did as I was playing around with a new filter. Even though this is a completely new toolset, Illustrator is no stranger to 3D. For years now, it has some really cool but fairly underutilized 3D functionality. The new 3D tools are in a lot of ways an evolution of that. The old effect is not gone, it's still there, it's just rebranded as classic and it lives under the same menu as the new tools. So what's there? As far as modeling goes, not much has changed. We can still extrude, lathe, or just project the shape onto a 3D work plane. But we now also have this inflate option which allows for more modeling possibilities. The inflate command can give us some more organic shapes, especially when compared to the extrude command. With the new 3D effect, we see big gains in the performance department. So adjusting the object, rotating it, and changing the material feels very snappy. With the old tool, there was a slight delay after each adjustment. Now everything happens almost in real time. Here I'm adjusting the bevel slider and there's no delay at all. Rotating the object is equally responsive. And when comparing this navigation to the now classic 3D effect, the difference in performance is quite obvious. Some of the other bigger and impactful changes can be seen in the other two tabs, the material and lighting tab. Let's start with the material tab first. Apart from the regular options to adjust our own material, we now have a whole new preset section. And as you can see, these presets are utilizing Substance. For those not familiar, Substance materials allow for a ton of editability since they're mostly parametric, so it's easy to grab a material and adjust it to fit your needs. We don't have a ton of presets available, but the good thing is that we're not just limited to the ones shown here. We can also download or use the ones we created ourselves. Where things get really interesting though is in the next tab, Lighting. As with the older version of the 3D effect, we have the ability to adjust our lighting, but now it's in a more interactive manner. We also have the ability to add shadows to our object. We can pick between having the shadow behind the object or underneath the object. But where things get extremely interesting is with this little button here. This enables ray traced rendering. <laughs> it definitely feels weird to say that, but it's true. Illustrator has a renderer that uses ray tracing. It even has a ding noiser. Notice how the light correctly interacts with the object and how natural the shadows look. We can even soften the shadows to get a different look for our illustration. Depending on where the light is, we will also get to see the color of the object bounce off onto the background. Since this type of rendering is costly time-wise, we can choose between three quality options, low, medium, and high. I mostly stick to the low setting, and when everything is finalized, I can enable the high quality rendering. But most of the times I just uh, use the low setting because the denoiser available is doing a really good job keeping the noise at bay. This can be problematic, but more on that later on. Overall, it's quite exciting to see this marriage between 2D and 3D and all the possibilities it offers. But keep in mind that this is a first iteration, so there are quite a few limitations. My main issue with this new 3D effect has to do with the fact that it's not really addressing any of the limitations of the older effect. For example, rotating a group of objects is basically impossible. We can select and rotate an object on an individual basis, but selecting more than one and rotating them is not possible. That alone reduces the type of 3D scenes we can create. It also makes things unnecessarily complex. For example, because we cannot rotate objects as a unit, these cubes have to be manually adjusted in order to get the rotation we're after. In this case, it's just three objects, but imagine how time consuming this will be with 10 or 15 objects. This workflow also forces us to work in isometric view because that's the only way one can get rotations that will always work with other surrounding objects. If we had the ability to rotate multiple objects at once, we would have much more freedom in our compositions. Another thing that was missing on the older 3D effect and is also not being addressed in the new one is more complex interactions between objects. For example, 
Something as simple as an object being obstructed by another object requires a lot of hacks and tedious editing. In this case, I have to cut this section of the curve and then adjust the priority and alignment of the objects in order to get the desired effect. Imagine a more complex illustration and you can immediately see how tedious this can be. Of course, this effect is not meant to replace 3D programs, but I think providing solutions to these basic problems will not only speed up one's workflow, but it will also lead to illustrations that are just not possible currently. I could go on and on, but you get the point. Personally, I was hoping that we would get a buffed up version of the old 3D effect, but it looks like this is not the case, at least in this first iteration. It's a shame because the older 3D tool didn't need a whole lot to become great. On the bright side, it's nice to see how performant the new 3D effect is, but I feel Adobe is focusing on the wrong thing. We don't really need realistic ray trace results inside Illustrator. We just need ways to create beautiful vector-based artwork that uses 3D functionality. And the older 3D effect did that really well. It just needed some extra love on its uh, functionality and performance. With a new 3D effect, the old approach is in a way abandoned. For example, getting vectors out of the new 3D effect is kinda tricky. Apart from the fact that the vector option is not turned on by default, the vectorization is limited. Only the outline of the shape is vectorized. The shading of the material or the substance material used cannot be vectorized at all which definitely defeats the purpose of the effect. With the old 3D tool, we could get the shading of the object as vectors, and we could also control how many vectors we would get out of that shading. This was not only incredibly helpful when working on an object, but it also allowed for some fine control, which is not currently possible with the new tool. In the process, we also lost some really important features, like texture mapping. This was a really beautiful feature in the old 3D effect because it allowed us to map art onto the 3D geometry and in the process get some more complex effects out of it. This would have been the perfect feature to showcase the new rendering engine since it would have allowed for realistic mockups of coffee cups, beer cans, etc. The lack of interaction between objects is also another missed opportunity for the new rendering engine. For example, this object would benefit greatly from having the surface of one area being reflected to other surrounding surfaces. The same applies for the shadows. Because of these limitations, we have to cheat quite a bit. As you can see, this object is using the new rendering engine as a base, but to have everything blend together correctly, we need to rely on a ton of other vector shapes layered on top. As nice as the new rendering engine is, it introduces a whole lot of issues. It's quite easy to trigger insanely long renders. For example, this is a 2x2 cm cube. And this one is exactly the same shape, but 12 by 12 centimeters in size. This size difference will have a huge impact in rendering time when we enable ray tracing. So if I start moving the light around on the small cube and let it render, you will notice that the result happens in almost real time. Now, if I start moving the light around on the big cube, you will immediately notice the rendering difference. Render times get even worse once we start enabling other things like shadows. On the small cube, the result is almost instantaneous, but on the big cube, things really start to slow down. Now, if we increase the shadow bounds and we also increase the softness of the shadow, render times will just go sky high. It's very easy to bog down the system for several minutes, just with simple things like that. I'm not exactly sure what's going on behind the scenes, but I think the render settings used are probably making things more complex than they need to be. I'm guessing it's a combination of a lot of different things that uh, lead to these crazy render times. For example, the 12 by 12 centimeter rectangle probably triggers a higher resolution render than the smaller rectangle. The second issue is probably the fact that they're using really high quality settings even in the low setting option. And finally, having the ability to get soft or hard shadows with just a slider results in a really complex setup. It's nice to have these simple controls, especially for people not familiar with 3D, but no matter what, a cube shouldn't take this long to render. Here's Cinema 4D rendering a similar scene. This is the kind of speed I would expect from Adobe's renderer. As you can see, I don't even bother denoising the image because the render quality is not important in this stage. Only when doing the final render, I would obsess about noise and high quality settings. 
I definitely applaud the effort and you can see the work that went into this uh, feature, but I'm not so sure that this is the right direction. A 2D application cannot compete with dedicated 3D apps. So Adobe's focus shouldn't really be advanced rendering options inside uh, Illustrator or Substance Materials for that matter. Instead, Adobe should have addressed the limitations of the old 3D effect. Of course, this is the first iteration of the new 3D functionality, so things can improve in the coming months, but I have the feeling that we should have been a little bit further in this uh, first iteration. But that's just me. What do you guys think? Are you happy with the new uh, functionality? Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to also ask me any questions about the new 3D tools, and I'll do my best to answer them. And that's it for this video. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.